Hey guys, welcome back. Um, let's get started. Um, you can find my uh, data set on my GitHub, which I'm going to leave a link to. Okay, so we're going to build a very accurate cybersecurity model using this data set. It's going to have an F1 score 84%. And 100% accuracy. We're going to build a big confusion matrix because it's got so many classes. Okay. Before you get started, um, you're going to download this data set. We're going to do feature engineering on it. And then you're going to use this data set for the next video I'm about to do. Okay. Click on the link below. Okay, guys, now before we get started, um, if you guys are new to my channel, uh, be sure to check out Azure Deployments, AWS SageMaker Deployments, AWS SageMaker Pipelines for MLOps, uh, IBM Watson Deployments, and you guys can also check out Streamlit Deployments on both Render Cloud and Streamlit Cloud. Okay, and then uh, I've got everything from AI and ML web apps to natural language processing for that. I've got natural language processing on my channel. I got reinforcement learning videos. Check out my playlists. Check out it all. I got everything. If you're here for something, there's something else you need. Okay, guys, let's get started. Import pandas as PD. It's a library in Python for data analysis. Matplotlib, which we're going to use later for data visualization, test train split from scikit-learn, and read with Excel. Don't try and read with pandas. I mean, don't try and read with uh, CSV. You know, PD read CSV. No, read with Excel. Okay, DF head, DF. Now we're, this is our target Y right here. These are just our features. Okay, import all of these. Label encoder for feature engineering. Fill in A0 and place equals true. Okay, you see? X is drop control ID, everything but the control ID. Y is the control ID, test train split. You guys can change those parameters if you want. And you guys can try another algorithm and see what performs better. Just replace it down there. That's all you got to do. Okay, so import all these standard scalers for scaling. It's part of our feature engineering. Okay. And this is for the confusion matrix. Remember, guys, we got to fit the model. Y pred equals model for because we're going to cross-validate later to score it. Ypred, we're going to splice 200. Okay. Print the accuracy score, the comp mat, the confusion matrix of Y test and Ypred. Remember, we're cross validating. And we're making a confusion matrix. Okay, the classification report, as you can see, it performed very well. Okay, and then the comp mat equals the confusion matrix. I did that again. Probably shouldn't have. It doesn't matter though. Print the conf mat and uh, mat show the conf mat. You guys can change uh, this to another color if you want. And then use these ranges. Okay. Text. Conf mat. And then center. You guys can change those parameters if you want. You guys can change the title too if it's scored different. Predicted label and true label. Okay, as you can see, the true label, the predicted label. Okay. And guys, remember, this is just the basics. See some of my other videos for going off and actually turning these into AI and ML web apps. Now, guys, uh, let me explain to you about the data set. Okay. This is from NIST Controls. It's a cybersecurity framework, and these are the mappings. You know, just like there's MITRE, which I'm going to do later. Well, I took the data of all the outcomes. Let me get into that for a second. I took the data and turned it into a machine learning model. 
control name, control status, mapping type, technique ID. In fact, you can make another one of these the target if you want. Control status, technique ID, control name, technique name. So, um, just so you know, NIST is a very popular framework, so is MITRE for uh, cybersecurity. And uh, as you know, uh, you can use machine learning in cybersecurity to automate the controls. You see, like if this were in a web app to make a decision or to do a risk score, which I'm going to do in the next video is the risk score because we need to give something a score sometimes in order to tell the client a risk which I'm going to do in the next video. See the next video. Okay, guys? And uh, just so you know, um, my channel has everything. Okay? And so if you're here for something, I guarantee you there's something else you need. And uh, just so you know, there's another one I left. Risk framing data. You know, you guys can read this with Excel and do this one, too, to improve your machine learning. You know, see which column, which algorithm scores the highest F1 score. Because remember, guys, let's say I had a high accuracy score and a low F1 score. The model wouldn't be too good, right? Because F1 score is true positives. You know, so what would it be good if I had too many false positives, you know? Or not enough true positive, you know. Okay, so what good would the model be? Like, let's say it had 20% F1 score. That's a lot of false positives. And it had a fairly decent accuracy score. It, the model's no good. But when your F1 score is at least 70% and it's got a high accuracy score, your model's good enough. But we should try and get in the 80 and above range like we did. Okay, guys, and uh, go off and uh, see which algorithm scores the best. I didn't do all the algorithms. There's so many. There's quadratic discriminant analysis. Now, uh, as you know, an ADA boost, which is bagging, is probably not a good uh, one for a lot of data sets. Neither is an SVM. Just being honest, SVM... I rarely uh, ran into any data sets that it was actually very effective. Um, just so you know, guys, on my channel, I've got everything. And uh, you guys can also do the control name, too. See how that works out. Or the technique ID. See how that works out. And this is all public source data, so don't worry that I got it. That's the thing. And my data sets, I either show you on Kegel where you can get it on my channel, or I provide it to you like I am now. Just click on the link below. Also, on the links of all my videos, I leave a book for more in-depth. So you guys can, uh, you know, buy the book. And you guys can see. Now, if you guys like my video, feel free to subscribe. Feel free to like if you liked it. You know, it helps me out. We all, in machine learning, we know how algorithms work. Therefore, the content, uh, the hybrid recommender system in YouTube, it helps me out, as you guys know. And speaking of which, I got some content, some collaborative filtering, and I've even got them into web apps. So check that out. Till next time, guys. Thank you. Bye.